Minnesota Fighting Vikings could free up all the money and just throw it at Jumpin' Joe Thune, but they probably won't. But you still want to bring in a free agent body or two to try and improve the Minnesota Fighting Vikings offensive line situation. Uh, so let's go to the dollar store. Let's look, go shopping for some bargains. So we're not going to Manny's. We're not going to Murray's, but you're getting McDonald's uh, dollar menu. Woo! McChicken. Uh, and last time, we talked about Austin Blythe of the Rams, John Feliciano of the Bills, as well as Jermaine Elamignor of the Patriots in an earlier video. But here are four more free agent value guards for the Vikings. But can they play guard? I think they can. Now, remember, these are value. So there's going to be some warts on them. Sorry we're not getting all pros for the league minimum, but you'll live with it. Number one. So a guy I've had a draft crush on for a while, Forrest Lamp of the Chargers. Now, it hasn't worked out. We'll get into why. Uh, but 27 years young, 6'4", 3'10", uh, 2017 second round pick, number 38 overall by the Chargers out of Western Kentucky University. Started 51 games for the Hilltoppers, all at left tackle, was a senior bowl stud, stud. And he destroyed the combine, physical freak. 40, on point, broad jump, agility drills, and the bench. Now, Lamp has gotten a crap roll of the dice when it comes to injuries. That's why he's going to be available and pretty cheap. Uh, tore his ACL in camp as a rookie in 2017. 2019, his season ended with a broken fibula, which, painful. Uh, 2020 was actually his first season as a full-time starter in the league. Played 1,186 snaps with the Chargers uh, at left guard on a horrific not good. Chargers offensive line allowed 38 pressures and two sacks. For comparison, Dakota Dozier allowed 46 and six. So, uh, uh, would definitely benefit from a change of scenery. And I'm not ready to give up on him quite yet. Uh, and he wouldn't break the bank. I think he's going to sign somewhere for the minimum. Uh, plus, would slide in nicely at that left guard spot or at least uh, for competition. And would be an asset in the scheme. Yes, I love Lamp. Uh, next up, number two. So a guy you've heard of before, Chance Warmack of the Seahawks. And it's a name you know, and it's shocking. He's only 29 years old because it feels like Chance Warmack has been around forever. 6'2", 323. 2013, number 10 overall pick by the Tennessee Titans coming out of Alabama. Now, it might just be because he was in the spotlight at Alabama for a number of years, declared early, and was drafted, and he was young. So... Sort of makes sense. Uh, but was a decent starter at right guard for the Titans for three seasons. But they declined his fifth-year option. Was ironically replaced by Josh Klein. So, no. Uh, signed with the Eagles for two seasons. Was a reserve and spot starter. Yes, was part of that 2017. 38-7 Eagles. One Super Bowl. Blah. Uh, 2019 ended up out of football. And then 2020 signed with the Seahawks, and then opted out uh, of the season. Now, he hasn't played any meaningful football since 2018. But like we mentioned... He's only 29, which is just, ah. but he still has power, still has people moving skills. And if he's dialed in and wants to play, would be an intriguing depth option. Plus, he's probably going to make the league minimum if he does play. Uh, next up, value for agent number three uh, for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings, Michael Schofield coming in from the Panthers. Now, he's been a longtime Vikings trade rumor guy, especially when he was with the Chargers, but 30 years old, six foot six, 301 pounds, a Michigan man, uh, and was a third round pick in 2014 by the Broncos. Yes, Gary Kubiak, Rick Dennison, chemistry, unless they fire Dennison and Kubiak is retired. So, whatever combine uh very agile saw three cone and short shuttle plus uh, a blazing fast 5.01 in the 40 he's og ezra cleveland a, a guy who should have been tackled then they kicked inside the guard uh 2015 his second season in the league uh, he took over the starting right tackle job uh, for the kubiak super bowl champion broncos played 1068 snaps and posted a nice 69.4 pff grade uh chargers picked him up in 2017 played three years in the city of angels uh 2019 played 1057 snaps all at right guard uh posted a 76.9 pff pass blocking grade allowing only 26 pressures and one sack and 2020 signed a minimal free agent deal uh with the panthers they just hired the former chargers offensive line coach so that makes sense uh made three spot starts and was sort of Nah. Uh, but yeah, Schofield, given his history with Dennison, if they do hang on to him, uh, and Gary Kubek, I'm sure, would vouch for him, uh, but would be a perfect zone fit and, and would be dirt cheap. Lastly, value for agent number four for the Minnesota Vikings this offseason, Ethan Posich coming from the Seahawks. And another guy that I have liked for a long time, 25 years old, 6'6", 6 6, 320, uh, was a 2017 second round selection, number 58 overall by the Seahawks. And I was in on Posich. Like, if the Vikings hadn't gone Dalvin uh, at 41 overall, if they had just taken Posich, okay, 
okay, I'm in. Absolutely loved and adored him coming out of LSU. But as a guy who can legitimately play all five spots on the offensive line, left tackle all the way over to right tackle, play guard and center for the Seahawks, uh, 29 career starts. Uh, this is his first season. As a full-time starter, allowed only 20 pressures and two sacks. So, yeah, Russ can piss and moan about his protection. It wasn't Ethan Postage's fault. Also had a clean sheet against the Vikings when they got it on uh, this season on Sunday Night Football. And in terms of the, hey, this guy played well against the scouting, look for it. Uh, in the final year of his rookie deal, uh, I think that he would be relatively cheap uh, as he gets out there, but he's going to get something uh, in the five, six million dollar range, maybe a three year deal somewhere in there, uh, but plopping him in at one of the guard spots would be great given his size, uh, developed uh, a decent NFL anchor, uh, intelligent leader up front, uh, plus has great athleticism uh, to thrive in the zone scheme, get in second level, uh, plus he can be a hedge at center just in case Bradbury doesn't step up in year three. Uh, I think that would make a ton of sense. But uh, that's it. That's four more free agent guards for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work post on the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.